Let's have a small discussion on two-point polygons. In certain areas, this can be important to achieving certain effects that would take too long to calculate without them. So what two-point polygons are, or it's essentially just two vertex points connected by a polygon. So that means that I can bend this thing and it will bend this line. Uh, these, are, these tend to be very, very efficient to compute because there, there's just not much to look at in terms of uh, geometry. Even knowing this, though, I don't recommend using two-point polygons with MetaLink to animate things like this because you lose control for one and it, it's not that much faster in terms of calculations. So with with this branch that is controlled by two point polygons, I can't go to I can't click on the tip of it like I could with a rigid body chain and go, oh okay, well, uh, I want this to be uh, a lot heavier so that it'll swing at the tip more. Now keep in mind that there's always going to be situations where one is better than the other. And generally, if the object needs to collide with other objects and the floor at the same time, then you're going to find out that it's, it's much easier to get desirable results using two-point polygons rather than a, a bone chain that uses a cone twist to to try and achieve this exact same result. There's not really much that you can do about this really angled look here because we're limited to the resolution of these bones. It's not interpolating between these very well. I mean, we could go into bone properties and try to mess with this and use like inverse distance, and that cleans it up a little bit, but it doesn't fix the overall problem. The, the simulation just, it just doesn't look that great, whereas this one falls quite graceful, gracefully in comparison. And one other thing to mention here is that uh, deforming bodies tend to be easier to manage overall as well. Because if we open up if, if we open up our properties in Bullet, we can see that uh, we have one, exactly one object to manage uh, that's a deforming body. Okay, whereas this bone chain consists of all of these bones and all of these constraints. Two-point polygons make it much, much easier to pile plastic edibles right on top of each other, just like this. So uh, whenever there's a lot of stuff involved and they all need to be chains, uh, it, it's generally easier to use two-point polygons. This can apply to a lot of different scenarios. For instance, uh, I have this toothbrush here and the bristles of this toothbrush are nothing more than two-point polygons. So we can see that I've, I've just set this up like so, and there's not a whole lot of geometry here. This is 680 polygons, uh, and what that yields is this result. And we can see that every single bristle is going to interact with these teeth, and we get some beautiful detail. Hair, of course, is another good candidate for two-point polygon usage because you would often use it with uh, fiber effects and more detail scenarios. And uh, you don't this th more specifically, you don't expect the hair to be uh, subject to very complex collisions. You mainly just want the hair to flow and and to be uh, affected by things like wind or or something else. Uh, one other good use case is with um, with trees. Now, trees can be an animator's nightmare because uh, it requires a lot of technical skill to be able to animate a tree in a decent manner, uh, something that looks good. Uh, Bullet can be a, a, a good tool for helping you achieve this. So we have this tree here, and uh, all I did was use a force element that has like turbulence applied or something like that and moved it over the tree so that I can simulate very very strong winds. Now of course I'm using MetaLink to drive this tree and uh, because I generated this this plant using DP Verter uh, which is basically a, a tree generation plugin I was able to generate this two-point polygon variant of this tree 
which in turn allows me to control it with bullet so that I can get this animation without a whole lot of calculation time. The last thing I should mention is uh, how I create polygon chains in the first place. There is a proper way to do it because if you just cheat and make a box and then uh, create a number of divisions and delete the corners using point mode, this will leave you with a polygon chain, but this won't work with fiber effects because of the, uh, the, the point order of this polygon chain is not going to be what fiber effects is looking for. Therefore it will not work at all. So what I typically do when I create a two point polygon chain is that I use the line pin tool. I create a single line that goes up, commit the change by hitting enter. And then I'll go into the multiply tab and under subdivide, there's a tool called Julian, and this essentially just chops up your, uh, this, it's kind of like it divides your model. Um, and I'll, I'll just give it, give this line 10 divisions. Okay. And this will actually work with fiber effects. Uh, it'll, it'll generate fibers properly and you'll be able to use it right off the bat. One last thing, Metalink only really works well on, on well-defined shapes. And what I mean by that is that this tree works well because its branches can be represented almost exactly with these points. But for something like a fir tree, if you try to represent a, a fir tree with a skeleton like this, um, Metalink will not operate well on it. Let me show you what the result looks like in layout. So we can see that the geometry just tears itself apart because there's there's no smoothing mechanism uh, that that's suitable for this type of situation. It, it doesn't quite interpolate the results as well as you don't have any control over it is the problem. So if you want to use this kind of skeleton on this tree, you, you're actually going to need Cage Deformer to pull that off. So with Cage Deformer, with its points set to volume mode, it actually looks like this. So that's actually quite usable. But again, this is a third-party plugin. This is the only way that you can use a non-standard, uh, a non-set shape to define polygons. And even this method has its drawbacks because it it puts a significant burden on the overhead of the scene. So typically you're going to be working with all of this stuff off and you're just going to be going off of what you see in the preview, which pretty much calculates instantly because it's just points. But, but yeah, having the cage deformer on uh, along with any texture displacements you might have will have a, a pretty substantial overhead on your scene. So generally you're going to be baking this out before applying it to your main production scene.